Hey everybody. So we got a big one today. A lot of you on Instagram have been waiting for this, but this is Kalina's baguette bag video. So this is a baguette. Kalina designed it. It is a beautiful bag and the pattern's going to be in the description. Um, this bag is super easy to make, so it looks very complicated, but she designed it in a way that if you've never made a bag before, this is honestly a really cool bag to make, even beyond just a simple tote bag that we've done videos on before. So you have the pattern here. The only thing you need beyond that is a strip of three quarter inch leather and a strip of one inch leather to make the handle. Obviously, we're not gonna put that in the pattern. You can make the handle as long as you want. And as you'll see, you're gonna size the strip of three quarter to your leather. I'll show you how to do it as we go on. The cool thing about this bag design, you can make it pretty basic. This is very nice, but it's pretty basic. You can then go and you can make it sort of Dooney and Burke style, fully lined, fully bound, bag feet from Buckle Guy. I did a center seam here, which you don't have to do. You can do something like this, which you get a little higher end. This is Vachetta, fully lined inside and out, croc skin, panels, single seam, no, no, no seam, one full gusset, and again, all bound and stuff like that. This one's for my grandma. All the edges are painted. You can go a different direction with it too, though. So this bag and this video is gonna be a collab with our friend Melissa at Dad Hands. She tooled us up, I sent her this, she tooled us up some panels, some very quarter specific panels. And this is a great bag pattern for tooling. Kaylina loves seeing everyone getting into tooling. We don't tool, but we love the art of it. This whole front panel, back panel you can tool. So we're making up one bag and there's gonna be a link in the description. Melissa made some videos making these panels, tooling these panels. So if you wanna go watch those, she's gonna do, I think she's doing a little voiceover and everything. But these are just amazing. You've got the two cats getting beamed up. My tattoo she got in there, big Get Up Kids fan. We've got the Astro Van or the Aerostar on the beach on the Cape. It just total acid trip sunset. Um, so this is our starting point. She tooled this up because I, God knows I can't tool to save my life. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is she left me a half inch border. So I am gonna go in and I'm gonna sew in a clean veg tan border around the outside of it. So let's get into that first. Okay, so once you get the main body pieces cut out, now keep in mind, we're doing a fancy tooled version. I, I just did a nice little, um, two ounce border around dad hands carvings. But if you're doing the simple version, all you have to do is cut out this pattern piece. Now, we didn't put this in the pattern because it's just strips of leather. For the handle, it's one inch. I'm gonna be using, you can do it stitched if you want. Uh, I'm gonna be using just one 10 ounce strip that I'm going to burnish, bevel burnish, finish the back and call it good. Um, then that's the cool thing with this pattern is you can make each part as fancy or as simple as you want And I think in terms of this one, there's going to be so much going on that a nice simple handle is going to be great um, So you need a one inch strip. This is 27 inches long. That's how long I made the handle um, But you can make it as long as you want The other thing you're going to need is we need to do this double seam here now this piece is just like a three ounce strip of leather three quarter inches wide it's gonna be in the pattern that you need that, um, but I don't know the length and I'll show you why. You don't really need to know the length. So I need a three quarter inch strip and we're gonna do this without a strap cutter because I'm not very good at cutting thin leather with a strap cutter for some reason. I don't, I don't know if it's- It's a little flimsy. It's yeah, high. it's kind of weird. So I'm just gonna take my calipers. I'm gonna set them to three quarters of an inch roughly. I put a straight edge on this piece of leather and all I'm gonna do is just Make myself a little mark here. That's all we need. And then we're just gonna cut a strip. And now this is about two feet long, um, but we're gonna trim it down before we sew it in. And the reason that I don't have a length for you is depending on, you know, we've talked a lot about already how many different ways you can make this bag. Depending on the thickness of this, this leather that you're using, depending on how you've made these panels, this is gonna vary depending on your stitch distance and stuff. It's all gonna vary. So the thing that I think is really kind of ingenious about this design that Kaylina made up is that you can you can make it in any so many different styles. You can tool it like we have right here. You can make it, like I said before, 
But that's the reason why we don't have a specific length for you to cut this piece, because it is all dependent on the thickness of the other materials that you're stacking around it. So we need two of these. And if you see these little marks and stuff, just those little, don't worry about it. It's natural veg tan. I like to be able to see that stuff in, in the work. Um, if you want it to be perfectly clean, obviously pick a perfectly clean piece. Now, the next thing we're going to do is, so I, what you, what I would do is, I would cut out this piece if you want a plain front. Cut out this piece out of something around two or three ounces, then line it with something around two or three ounces so that you have a six ounce total thickness. For me, because this is obviously, I mean, those are my cats getting beamed into a space shuttle. That's my 1994 Ford Aerostar in a LSD acid trip beach scene. Um, Melissa from Dad Hands, tools so clean that I just token all the back. I want to be able to see. I mean, I don't carry a purse. This is just going to be a, it's going to be a display piece, but the cleanliness of her tooling, I wanted that to be on display. So I want to look in this bag and see just how perfectly clean she tooled everything. So I'm leaving it like this. Um, but what I would do is, for the plain front, just do two, three ounce on the front, two, three ounce in the back, so you have like a five, six ounce total panel for this, or just use a five, six ounce panel. That's all you need to do. So I'm just going to wrap this around here like this and kind of get a rough estimate of how much of this we need. Um, I'm just going to cut this a little higher than we need there. And I'm going to cut this a little higher than we need there. Now the one important thing is, we want one end to be a perfect right angle. So I'm just going to use the marks on my cutting board. Nothing fancy. We have a perfect right angle. Then I'm going to take my calipers again and I'm going to run a line down one side of it. And now on our body piece, I've stitched all the way around, or I've punched all the way around the outside. I'm going to do the same thing on this piece. Oh my god, there's a gigantic fly. Um, just using like a 9 tooth or a 12 tooth or whatever you got. Just bang it out quick. Um, start by hanging one tooth over the edge because that's exactly what I did on this piece. So I know that if I hang a tooth over the edge here, and then I go to match this up, it's going to match up perfectly. And I think you guys will be able to see where I'm going with this after I do this, this one part here. We're going to punch all the way down. This We're going to punch this whole strip. Okay, so we're going to take our three-quarter inch strip that we've punched all the holes in. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to match up this whole here. Now, if you want to, you can glue it. Kaylina glues it. I don't glue it. It's all personal preference here. Um, I'm using Ritza 0.6 millimeter waxed thread. I'm just going to take one clip. You don't have to use any of the fancy leatherback clips because you're just clipping grain to grain. You're not clipping the face or anything like that. And all we're going to do is start sewing. So I'm going to wrap over this because I usually don't wrap over... Well, fold these things down so you don't catch on them. I usually don't wrap over places like this, but it's so hidden that there's going to be no abrasion. So it'll just make sure that it... Uh, lays the way we want it to. And then all there is to do, um, this is going to be, there's a lot of sewing because it's a big bag, but um, all we have to do now is we just sew all the way around. And because we punched this and this with the same stitching chisels, it's all going to match up perfectly, see? And we have more than enough to wrap all the way around. Once we get to the end, we're just going to trim it off before we finish our stitching. And then we can do our wrap over the top, and you'll be good to go. So the thing about this pattern is, I know a lot of you guys haven't made super intricate bags before, and this bag that I think one of the geniuses behind one of, there's a lot of genius behind this bag design that Kaylee made. But for me, it's ultimately a pretty simple thing to make that looks extremely detailed. It's just a beautiful design either way. Any way you look at it. Um, well, it really is, you know? <laughs> and but, but the thing is that what we're doing is we're breaking this down into two parts because it's the sides, the panel, and the gusset, and then it's the base 
and the handle. And we're going to make those in two separate parts, which is why we haven't touched any of this piece of our pattern yet. And we're going to put those two together. Um, because once you see how they go together, I think you'll feel a lot more confident if you've never made, made a bag like this, that you, if you've only done card wallets, you've only done maybe a bifold, you can make this because you can. And um, so that's why we're doing it this way. Um, like I said, if you're more advanced, you want to glue all this in, go for it. Um, ultimately, this is a fully hidden stitch. You're never going to see the stitch line at all. So that's what I'm going to be doing for the next hour is I'm just going to go around and sew around all of this. I will stop when I get to the end here. Um, and I apologize if I sound a little out of it, I just had a panic attack, I had to take my meds, but we're getting through it. Um, I'm going to stop when I get around here and show you how I finish this side off, and then I'm just going to do the other one off camera. Then we'll pick up tomorrow once I have everything done. We'll make the base, we're going to do some bag feet from Buckle Guy. They're bag feet, they do solid brass bag feet that look really nice. I'm going to show you how to do either um, a full gusset, or if you want to do a center seam and you can use smaller panels to make this bag, we can do that too. So let me get some stitching done. We'll come back in an hour or so and I'll show you how to finish this off and then we'll get going from okay, there. So as you can see, we have about five, six stitches left. Now, just as a precaution, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to count the stitches, right? So I have one, two, three, four stitches left. One, two, three, four stitches left. So I'm going to take this and I'm just going to cut it a little bit above what I need. So. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna cut it right at the fifth stitch, like that. Then I can flip this over and just trim it flush with this flat part. That's what that flat part's for. And you can see how easy this is to stitch um, because we used the same stitching spacing. Everything lines up perfect. Um, and like I said, if you wanna glue this and punch it after, go for it. Um, I'm really aiming this, we really want to aim this at people that have never made a bag like this before. And this is a very simple way to do this that's very approachable. You don't have to really worry about gluing in these corners or anything like that. But make sure you use for this gusset, make sure you use leather that's thin enough that it'll be able to take that corner. Three ounces, maybe four. Um, I wouldn't go two, but I wouldn't go five. All right, we got a, we got a lighter. Um, so just melt your thread. I'm gonna, I would melt it on the inside because you're not going to see like in this gusset, you're gonna be looking down this way. So, because we didn't use any glue, you're gonna have a little more flexibility here and you don't have to worry about gluing too far and seeing any glue in this seam, which is one of the reasons I like this style of construction. But I'm gonna gently fold this back like this because remember, this is eventually gonna lay flat against our bottom gusset that goes along the whole bag. But, now this is different for some leathers, so test your leathers because you can crack a leather if it's too dry. I'm going to go in with my little hammer here, and we're going to start slowly working this because we need to bend this to a right angle. And the closer we can get this to a right angle now, the easier our glue up is going to be once we have the bottom gusset done. So you can see we have this part done, glued to this, see? So this will pop right in once we make our side gusset here. So for tonight, I am going to get our handle all beveled and burnished up, and I'm going to get our next seam, our other double seam sewn onto this piece. And then tomorrow, we're gonna get, basically finish up the whole bag, because once we fit this point, it's kind of the home stretch. I'm gonna show you how to do the bottom gusset with some bag feet. You can see Kaylina did a double, a French seam here. We're actually gonna do just a single seam because the way that we made this pattern, you can either cut it in two separate pieces if you have smaller pieces of leather, or you can do one full piece, which is only about 20 inches long. So it's not like cutting off belt or anything. It's very doable. Um, and it's only, I think, a four inch strip. So you're not, you can do, you don't have to cut it out of a weird shape. Like you can get, you can do a straight cut and then you're not creating any weird nooks and crannies to waste any other leather. So we're on day three. We have this whole thing stitched in. You can see now we have our gusset ready to go. Now what I did was I just burnished this so we have a nice side. You're never going to really see it, but I like to do that anyway. And we have our strap. Now remember this is a one inch strap. I'm using a 27 inches long, but you can make it as long as you want. Today we're going to focus on getting this whole thing finished. Now this is the gusset printout. What I like to do is print out two pages of this. The way that you put this together is there's two overlaps. There's overlap one, 
which we're going to overlap, overlap one and overlap one to make one side. I'm going to get a little tape, excuse the noise. And you can do this on your cutting mat to make sure everything's nice and straight. And you're just going to overlay that and tape it, and then I like to tape it on both sides. Just with some packing tape covered in dog hair, you know, the usual. That's gross looking, excuse it. <laughs> um, it, dog hair. it might be me hair. <laughs> <laughs> they do have very long hair. Um, that's... It has a buzz cut. That's true. <laughs> hey, it's my hair, right? It's my hair. Is it gray? Maybe it's mine. It could be yours, too. <laughs> Whatever. It's going to look gross. This is what it is. All right. Uh, there's a couple things we need to punch out here. These two holes are going to be for the rivets for both our buckle piece so that the handle is adjustable and for our bag feet because we are going to install some bag feet. Now, you don't have to install bag feet, but Buckle Guy makes a ton of cool bag feet, and I've started using them a lot, and they're really fun, and they look really nice. So, for our bottom, you have two options. I've printed out two copies of this. Now, on this side, you have multiple options here. If you want to do a French seam like this, which takes less, you know, if you don't have, if you're making this out of panels of leather, and you don't have a 20 inch long piece, you can do it like this. What you're gonna do is you're gonna use this overlap as your French seam. So you're gonna glue, you're gonna trace out two of these, you're gonna sew down the middle at this half inch mark, fold them over, and do a French seam like this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna print out an extra piece of this piece of, the, of this part of the pattern, and we're gonna do a seamless bottom like this. Because it's nice and clean, and to be honest, it's not like a ton of leather. Um, I don't think it's actually a full 20 inches. It is... That's 22 inches, so <laughs> it's more than 20 inches. But I think it's worth it, um, if you can, just to get that nice clean look. So I'm just going to cut these out and tape these up, and then I'll show you how we're going to tape this together so that we have the perfect length. To do it in one piece, what we're going to do is we're not going to overlap like that, although you could. It doesn't make it, it's only going to add a quarter inch to either side. I'm going to overlap it like this. We want this line, and again, I'm going to use the line on my cutting board to make sure I overlap it properly. We want these lines to line up, right? So we're going to just go like that. Try to get no hair on this this time. There we go. And then what I like to do is just flip it over and add some tape on the back side. And then you have a nice solid pattern. Now all we got to do is punch out our holes here. This is for our bag feet. And this is going to be, one of these sides is going to be to rivet on our buckle piece. And the other side is just going to be to rivet on our handle. Because in this design, you do have a choice. You can do buckles on both sides. So you can put a buckle here and a buckle here. So you have like a lot of adjustability. I've been doing, and Kaylina designed it to have a buckle on one side and just have it fixed on the other. But if you want to do two buckles, go for it. It would look cool. Or so, no buckles. Huh? Or no buckles. Or no buckles if you want it to just be fixed. Yeah. You don't need this piece at all if you just want to rivet in a fixed strap. Yeah. So we're going to be awesome. using, yeah, we're going to be using uh, a nice solid brass one inch roller buckle from Buckle Guy. I like these because they're nice and small. It has a little protective thing on it. Um, Anyway, they look like this. They're nice and small on a one-inch strap, which you could go bigger if you want. You just have to widen this piece a little bit. And then the other thing that I did was we left you some room here on the end so you can choose which shape you want. You can cut it flat, um, or you can do... We're going to do an English point on this one, but you can just do, if you just have, like, a rounded one, you could just do a rounded belt-end punch as well. So you get to pick that, um, get creative with it. So now it's time to trace some stuff on leather. I am going to be using some of our um, Veladon or sticky backed lining, whatever you have, um, for the base of this because it's nice to have a little bit of structure. So let's get to tracing this. I'm going to trace this on four ounce leather and then we're going to also line it after we get our bag feet installed.
Okay, so once we have our big piece cut out, it's bag feet time. Now I'm not punching these holes yet because we need to line it and do everything. We'll punch the holes when we can get a through punch, but I do have them marked. These holes though, for our bag feet, I did punch. Now I'm 100% positive that Buckle Guy sells a setter for these. Um, I do not have it. And so this is how I do it. I just put it on my granite block, line this up, and you get it. We're just gonna hammer it away. It's not graceful, but it works a charm. Um, I suppose you can hammer it like this too. I just don't want to put marks in the feet themselves. So I do it this way. You just want to go slow so that it doesn't stick crooked, but it's pretty easy to do. Buckle Guy sells, they have circle ones, they have all different colors of this like kind of mid-century looking one. Once you start putting them on stuff, I'm like looking for bags to put them on because they're actually pretty fun. and they, It makes your piece look like very upscale and it's just like setting a rivet basically. So if you haven't tried them yet, it is a nice little touch, especially for this bag because it keeps it off the ground. Um, the next thing we need to do is we need to start installing our little stiffener pieces. Um, I do this in levels. I'm going to end up installing, so this is Velodon. Um, I end up installing like three or four lally, or two layers of this. The first one I do just over the bag feet, like this. The second one, I'm going to do a little bit of a bigger piece. And I'm going to show you, if you don't have like huge pieces, you can piece this together. It doesn't need to be a full complete piece. You can use it just kind of like, for lack of a better term, you can use scrap because it's so thin. And all this is, is like a nylon pulp based backing. You can get it at any sewing store. It doesn't need to be leather specific. This one just happens to have, it's not always called Belladon either. Um, this one just happens to have sticky back, which I kind of like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna size this roughly to the size of our base. And I'm gonna cut two squares. And then that's a little bit wide. So I'm just going to cut them down a bit, and they're so thin, you don't need to use rulers, you don't need to use anything like that, you're never going to see the outline of this or anything. But what this is going to do is, it's going to give us a little bit of extra structure in the bottom of this bag, because unlike building a toad or anything like that, this is kind of the first project we've ever done where you want some structure, you want to, you want to build up some strength in places so that when the bag is done, it sits properly and feels like it's almost engineered um, to be nice and sturdy in, in its own three-dimensional shape. So you can see I'm just using kind of scrap, but that's gonna give us the stiffness we need. And you can see as I hold it like this, this bends right where you can see how much structure there is just in those little couple pieces. So that's exactly what we want. And now we gotta glue all this up and we're gonna glue it to our liner, which is just gonna be another piece of four ounce vegetable. So while our glue's drying, we're gonna get our buckle piece ready to go. Um, and we're gonna use a little bit of reinforcement on this too because I want this to be a little thin. So I'm using like a three and a half, four ounce leather that obviously we're gonna fold upon itself. So we'll have about six or seven ounces, but using this nylon backing is kind of your secret to prevent stretch because we're not gonna be stitching this. We're just gonna glue it together. So we're gonna do a rivet there, a rivet there. Here's our buckle slot. And then of course the corresponding rivets on the other side. And these are all straight cuts for now. But I'm going to do an English point um, strap and punch to match our handle because that's what's going to be sliding through this center of our buckle and it'll sit nicely and match the point at the end of the buckle piece. So to make this piece it helps to have an inch and a half slot punch but if you don't all you have to do is punch a hole at one end 
punch a hole at the other, and then just connect them with the ruler. I'm gonna be using the slot punch just because we have it. Now, before we do that, this is a one inch wide strip. I have a three quarter inch wide piece of our fabric backing. And you'll notice it's not the full length. We just wanna catch the first rivet. That'll basically be the thing that prevents us from, prevents anything from stretching. If you wanna go the whole way, go for it. Um, but it doesn't really make that much difference as long as you're catching at least one of the rivets in this fabric. Now I'm gonna go over here and punch all my holes and punch, um, or and I'm gonna wait to punch the strap end until I have everything glued together so that it's nice and even. The way this is off-centered makes it a pain in the ass to use. Yeah. You hit it and it like... I think you're actually casting shadows. Oh, we can move them if we need to. So now we need a bit more glue. You can see how we have a rivet that's getting caught that's gonna catch our nylon. And I'm only gonna glue up to the slot punch. We're not gonna glue the slot punch itself because that's where our buckle's gonna sit and we want that to be able to move freely. On the template piece for the bag panels, we give you a bunch of lines. This is a half inch border, so if you're gonna do tooling, you have your little half inch and you see how much space that we would recommend that you use. Um, but we also have a bunch of center marks and I'm gonna use, this one I don't use as much, but I'm gonna make a little pencil mark on the center line down here. And then I'm gonna carry it over to our gusset, which you can kind of just draw it on there because you're never going to be able to see it once everything's glued down. We're going to use that to make sure that once we have our whole bottom gusset piece done, we can glue it in nice and centered. So I'm doing a little tiny mark here that you'll never be able to see. And then I'm going to use that little mark to carry it over. And you can see I'm not being totally perfect, but with a piece like this, that's basically all we need is a nice little pencil mark there. And that's going to allow us, once we have everything dried and put together, to glue it up so that it sits nice and proper and nothing's kind of out of whack. So assembling our buckle piece, oh, we're going to put, this is our back, we're gonna put that on there, we're gonna put our tongue through, and then we're gonna fold that over. Now the big thing with this is you wanna make sure that your holes line up. And as long as your holes line up, this slot punch should be perfect. There we go. That's all we need. So now I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna bring this to me. And I'm going to first hammer this down to set the glue. And you can see how it's it's slim. It's not this is not a very thick piece, but it doesn't need to be because we have that reinforcement in there. We are going to need to punch out the reinforcement so that we can get our rivets through. And then the last step is we're going to take our one inch strap end punch and we're going to give this bottom some shape. This is definitely going to fall off the thing when I do it. Yep. <laughs> That's okay. So now we have a nice piece ready to go. All we have to do is burnish these sides and it's ready to install once we glue up our gusset, which is the next thing we're gonna do. As you can see, this is not, you don't have to be super accurate with anything in this, which is, I really appreciate it. It'll go together, even if you make some little mistakes and look beautiful. And then I'm gonna use my squeaky roller. Get this all stuck down. So we have our centers marked here. We need our centers marked on the inside of our gusset piece. So all I'm gonna do is place my 
template here, make a little mark there. And I'm making this in pencil um, because if you can see it, then you can just erase it. Uh, and then what you can do is you can kind of use your cutting board to make sure that everything is in fact centered and these two are on the same place, which they are. So we just have to punch some holes and we're ready to get some action going here. Melissa sent me a little logo and I made a little stamp, not stamp, um, I branded it. Nope. <laughs> None of that is right. Little tag. So Melissa from Dad Hands sent me a bunch of her logos and I made a little tag. I'm going to hang it on the inside. So we're going to install the bottom rivet first. Then I'm going to install this in the top rivet so it hides the bottom rivet. And I'm going to do the same thing with my logo on the other side, but we'll do that later. I'm going to start by installing the bottom pop rivet, making sure that the top hole lines up. And you can see I'm just going to use the hand setter because I've honestly really been enjoying this hand setter. There we go. And we have a nice set snap on both sides. I'm going to leave it a little loose so that I can wiggle things around and get the top one where I need to and then we'll just tighten it up at the end. So then, I'm going to flip this over, I'm going to put Melissa's logo tag there, slide that through, and again, I'm going to kind of install this a little loose, so that, which is what I like about using the hand setter, so that I can make sure everything's lined up as I want it to. And then once we know everything's right where we want it, we can crank down on this thing. There we go, and that's actually perfect. So you see how the logo hides the other snap, it's nice and clean, and I accidentally set that one permanently anyway. So <laughs> now all I have to do is fold that back and stick it right in the setter, and we can crank this one down and we're permanently set. There we go, I think that looks pretty good to me. So now it is glue up time. What we're going to do is to get an idea of where we need to glue up, and the reason I'm not giving you this in the pattern is because, like I've said before, this is going to differ depending on what thickness and type of materials you, you're using. If you're binding, if you're using piping, you can do so much, so many different things with this pattern. I'm going to use some alligator clips just to clip it in the center, and then to get a rough estimate of where I'm gluing to, I'm just going to bend this up. It should be like a quarter inch from the top. It's a pretty tight pattern. That's all we need for a rough estimate. You can see that that's about where we want it. And I'm going to take a, an awl here, scratch all if I can find it. There we go. And I'm just going to make a little line there on the gusset part. And I'm going to take that one off. And I'm going to fold it back up this way. Do the same thing. And this is going to give us a rough estimate. Now I am not going to glue all the way to this line. I'm going to give myself about a half inch. Where the other clip go? I'm going to give myself about a half inch below it, or I'm going to glue about a half inch below it in case I'm a little off. And then we'll go in and we'll really dial that in uh, once the things are stuck. So I'm going to line up and transfer that line to the other side because they should be identical if we did our job right. Line up there, transfer that to there. And now we're just gonna get to gluing and sticking. All right, so now we're gonna assemble and clips help for assembly on this. They're not, we're not gonna use them for our glue, to let our glue dry, um, cause we're using barge cement. So we're just gonna hammer it down. But I'm gonna line up one side with my center mark here. And I'm going to press it, but I'm just going to use the clips as like extra hands. And the, the main thing here is you don't want to stretch anything. Because if you stretch the leather, then it's going to be all out of whack. So you want to just kind of gently bend it. And then add a clip. Gently bend. See how easy that is? 
and add a clip. And we're going to go to the other side. I'm going to work from the center out. And again, no stretching, just press down, add a clip. The stretching, you're more apt to stretch like in the curve here. So don't be afraid. Remember, this leather's not delicate. It can take curving, you know, it can take you bending it, it can take hammering. It's a tough material, so you want to make sure you take advantage of that. And you might find it helpful to add more clips in the curve because obviously there's the most tension there. And we're going to work our way down here. And there we go. We'll add a clip at the top. And we'll add a clip here. And look at that. We have our first side. It's starting to look like a bag. That's going to look so cool. <laughs> so, on to the second side. We're just going to do the same thing. I have my center mark. So my center mark is there, as we, we made it before. And I'm just going to line that up. Stick down maybe two inches of it and add a clip right there. And then I'm going to do the same thing, except this time it's a little easier because we already have our curve from the first side. So you see, and this is why I use barge spin. I know a lot of people don't use barge, they use other glues, which is fine. But it really helps to use a nice, good, sort of cobbler level glue that sticks as soon as it makes contact um, for just ease of installation on this. There we go. We're going to get it as close as we can, but we're going to sand this down too. So you don't have to worry about it being perfect. I'm running out of clips here. I'm going to have to steal some from the other side. There, clip there, oops, clip here. Now we get to see if we did it right. We did. It's even. It's standing. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> that, looks, that looks wild. And you can see our bag feet are nice and centered. They sit down. This is so cool. Shout out to that hands to Melissa for making these panels. This is gorgeous. So now what we need to do is we need to hammer this glue, glue line down. I'm going to use my cobbler's anvil for that. So let me just go get that real quick. So we've used this before. This is a cobbler's anvil. Um, you can get them for 20 bucks at estate sales or flea markets or whatever. Um, and now you can see, because we use barge, I can just pull these clips off and it's, it's, it's stuck enough. Um, I wouldn't be throwing it around right now because we haven't hammered it down yet. But what you can do is, if you only have like a sharp surface, you can hammer it like this. I like the cobbler's anvil because it has this edge here. So you see, I can go through now and really get a good hammer. Now, if you, on the curves, you're going to have to move it to the edge of your workbench. So this is kind of the weirdest part of this whole thing. Uh, we need to run a stitch line and punch. And I sanded everything down flush. You want to do that first. So it's all like a straight line. Um, but with the bag feet, if you're using bag feet, it makes it a little strange. It's not hard. It's just a little strange. So I'm just going to use the corner. This is, there we go. Just going to use the corner of my cutting mat here to kind of bypass those bag feet. Now when we get to the bottom here, this is where it gets a little tricky. 
you can just go ahead and smush this down as best you can. And it's a lot of just kind of muscling everything out of the way to make sure you're holding things straight. And you can see that gets you just a nice straight line on the back. Um, with the bag feet in the way, we're going to butt that up so we can still have direct contact with our punch board. It is a little difficult to hold, but it's not impossible at all. It wouldn't be my pattern if it wasn't a little weird. Yeah, if we weren't doing... This one's not shaped like a frog or anything, but... <laughs> There is a little a little nuance to getting this punch, but it's not difficult. It's just take your time, you know, just kind of slowly get at it, and it's really not hard at all. It's just a little awkward. Don't triple punch anything. <laughs> your face when I just did you were like. <laughs> I'm nervous. This is all stitched up all the way around. It looks gorgeous. And now we have to attach our shoulder strap to our rivets here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take, it's very simple, I'm just gonna take our little strap, our buckle template here. I'm gonna line that end up and just make a mark for my two rivet holes. Grab my punch. I have two holes here, and then I am going to put, I want to go just stamp our logo right there. So I'll be back in a second, and I'll, then we'll just install it. So here's one of the benefits to having this nice long arm that can stick out over your workbench. I've moved the, the rivet dies into the machine, and all I have to do, this fits nice and tight in here, and we have our rivet set. Without any problems. So, the last thing before we finish our straps is I'm just going to mark out, I'm going to go up about an inch and a half, and then I'm going to give myself a mark every inch for about, let's say, five, four inches. You can do more, you can do less, you can do different spacing. I guess we'll go with five holes. Once we punch these out, all we have to do is burnish our edges and we're good to go. I'm using a, an eighth inch punch here for, that should be plenty big enough for our buckle, the tongue of our buckle. came out so good so collaboration with dad hands check her out her she's gonna have a video that's releasing at the same time as our video uh, a full tutorial or a walkthrough on how she designed this panel and then next week she's releasing this panel and um, this is Kaylina's design I am just along for the ride on this one making it it just came out gorgeous and so this is our version obviously this is for me in the shop this is my van we went through the whole thing these are the cats um, you have dad hands, you have Melissa's logo in there. We did a tab there and then I just did my little stamp there. There's so much going on I didn't really want to put big logos on it or anything. But remember, we have, I'm just really proud of this pattern. Kaylina designed it. It's so simple, but it's so good. So, this is the basic pattern. Remember, you do have to cut some strips of your own, which will be in the pattern. And you can make it in any style you want. If you want to tool it and make it like this, if you want to make just a simple 
plain one, you can make that. If you want to go super high end and do binding and crock and all this stuff, you can. If you want to go with more of a Dooney and Burke vibe, this is actually epi leather. And it's all lined in wicket tumbled. Um, and then remember, you have the option of doing two separate pieces and doing a, um, a seam in the middle, or you can do one solid piece like we did here. Um, you don't have to make it with bag feet. You can make it without the bag feet. Just tons and tons of different opportunity. We're honestly, we're the most excited to see what you guys make because I think there are going to be so many different styles that this thing is made in. Um, Kayleen is excited because she wants there to be a closure so it could be like a zipper or like a, some sort of thing, but we didn't get it figured out. Neither of us could get it figured out. So I would love to see you guys try to figure out a closure for this because I will copy you. And so will Kaylina. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching. I'm gonna actually think I'm gonna take some still shots to show at the end because this is too good to just do a couple panning shots. And link to the, to the pattern will be in the description. Link to Melissa's video will be in the description doing all the tooling. And link to all the tools and materials, the hardware, the tools from Buckle Guy, everything, the press, the snaps, or the rivets, all that will be down there too. So thank you guys so much for watching. We're really excited for this one. We'll see you in the next one.